Hi all. I want to do a video on what programming language you should learn. When I uh, originally thought of doing this video, I only planned on like a real short video just to give you a general idea. And then I started thinking, well, you know, I, I got to have some type of outline so I don't miss nothing. So as I started outlining things, it got kind of big. So I have 18 points here and I could probably even keep going. But uh, we'll start at the beginning here and see how it goes. Uh, what programming language you should learn uh, or which one you should start with uh, the short answer is C++ you know that's that's what you should do C++ yeah uh, you'll see it written as C and C++ you know C is like the older version and then they updated it to C++ you know so uh, I started studying this stuff back about 95 and that's what my instructor said and he'd been in it I think at least 20 years before that and what he did it was a small community college it wasn't real small it, it was pretty big campus but it was just a two a two-year school but very well respected they started with uh, at least one C course and then I think they quickly moved into C++ and then Microsoft Windows programming but what he had said one time is you start here because it's the proper mindset uh, it would be like learning to drive a dragster before you learn to drive a regular car that just you, you can do it but it just wouldn't be the right way to do it you know so you know learning C C++ would be like learning a regular car learning to drive a regular car and then you know you could stay with C++ you know C C++ basically runs the world right now you know and it has for years but there's a lot of other languages out there uh, for various reasons you know uh, so we'll get into that as we move down through this so that's the short answer you know C++ you know. and if you're interested in that I have some videos that'll get you started Okay, so the long answer is what programming language you should learn. In the long run, it's basically, you know, like I couldn't tell you what instrument to learn. Guitar, drums, bass, you know, you have to make that decision. It depends on what you want to do. You know. If you want to be a guitar player, well, you shouldn't learn drums. It's the same thing with programming. If you want to learn to program things for the internet and web pages, well, you probably you probably don't need C++. So spending a couple years on C++ might be a waste of time for you. Uh, I watched a commercial on the internet the other day, YouTube, an advertisement, and uh, the fellow made it sound like you could learn programming in a day. Or a week and it just doesn't happen like that it takes years it's just like learning to play guitar I taught music for years mainly guitar but uh, I also taught drums bass a little bit of keyboard and the, the recording and electronics so 
it takes years to be a good guitar player. Uh, there's an old saying uh, with any business, you know, any field. You can be good in a year. Second year, you can be pretty good. Third year or more, you're an expert. Okay. I remember years ago, I picked up a, a quote. said, read three books on a topic and you're an expert. Well, kind of. It, it may take more than three but as a general idea. And then there's also a thing floating around. Uh, I, I think it was 10,000 hours. Don't hold me to the exact hours there, but I think they're saying if you spend 10,000 hours studying a topic, you're an expert. Which uh, 365 days a year, if you spend eight hours a day studying that topic, that's only 3,000 hours. So that basically works out to three years. I've had people say, or they recommend starting people on computer programming when they're really young. Uh, when I taught piano, I had a lot of doctors, a lot of local doctors would bring their children for piano lessons. They wanted to get their fingers going so they could operate. That was really common. But they weren't studying medicine when they were that small. You know, how do you know what that child wants to do when they're older? That you're going to have them study programming when they're in grade school or even high school. Uh, I don't know about you, but I didn't know what I wanted to do when I was in high school. The last thing I thought about was picking a major. Now, I'm sure there might be some people that say, I know this is what I want to do. Yeah. But for most of us, we don't know. Uh, you know, starting too young on a major, that's like picking a wife when you're 10 years old. You know, who does that? You know, that's just nuts these commercials or even schools where they say you can learn programming in a, a week or a month that's just totally ridiculous uh, if you're trying to decide if you want to go into this business it's 24 7 you know it's not a normal job same as doctor and a lawyer it's in your mind 24 hours a day it never goes away if you aren't up to that, then you may want to choose some other type of business where you can put in eight hours and go home. You know, plumbing or auto mechanic. Even the auto mechanics are going nuts these days because of all the computerization. You know, they're used to working a regular eight hour day and going home. When you get into computers, it just doesn't work like that. It's 24 hours a day. There are many programming languages Here's a wiki page. And you can see there's so many of them. They have them alphabetized A through Z. Okay. So not all of them are really popular not all of them are really used uh, some of them are really outdated you'll never see you know, there might be some company out in Timbuktu that still uses it okay so everybody has a different opinion at what programming language is best it's like the difference between Ford and Chevy. You know, some people like Ford, some people like Chevys. Some people like C, some people like C++, some people like Java. You know, you know everyone has a different opinion. Uh, 
if you're going in into this for a job, you know, my experience is most programming jobs went to India back around 2000. There's even a major cartoon that's been on television 20 years. Uh, I heard that the main drawing is still done here in America, but then they send it to India where they draw the thousands of slides. So. But, you know, so most of the programming jobs in the states are in the big cities, you know, New York, San Francisco. Uh, there might be a few miscellaneous companies around the country, but for the most part, you know, it would be just like coal mining is mostly in West Virginia, a few states down there, you know, but there still might be coal mines in other parts of, of the country. Uh, lots of programming is military. Uh, NSA has a lot of programmers. Uh, I don't remember the exact number, but I remember seeing an article. It said the NSA had like thousands times m more programmers than the FBI. Where the FBI might have 10,000, the NSA has like 100,000. So they have a lot more. So that might be where the jobs are. I also read an article that said the FBI had a hard time keeping programmers because they didn't pay enough. Uh, they only paid about half of what a corporation did. And that if people went into the FBI to be a programmer, they did it for more of a uh, uh, loyalty thing to our country. Okay, so there's different types of programming. A regular programming thing would be like C, C++ on a Linux box using the command line. Yeah. The command line is an old fashioned way. Yeah. Of course, there's more modern ways, but you should still learn how to do this. Uh, you may not want to start there. You might want to start with a GUI, GUI, graphical user interface type of programming thing. And then, but you should still learn to program with the command line. It would be like a doctor not bothering to use a needle because he always operates with robots. You know, why do I have to learn? to do it with my hands, I'm always going to do it with a robot. Well, it's the same thing here. Even though you're always going to use a GUI, you should still understand that how the command line works. Now, of course, that's my opinion. I'm sure there's other people out there that would say something different. So, it's up to you to make that decision in your career path. Uh, these days, a new language is Microsoft C Sharp. C Sharp and Java are the two competing ones. Those are the two more modern ones. They came out about uh, late 90s or so. So uh, C Sharp with Visual Studio on Windows would be a good way to go. So if you didn't want to start with C++, you know, starting with C Sharp might be a good way to go. So Java, Java came out like mid 90s or so. And it was all on the command line then. And then they came out with a GUI called Eclipse. I think there are a couple different GUIs that work with Java, but I think most people go with Eclipse now. And what's nice about Java is you can do it on any operating system. Microsoft Windows or L Linux or I'm not sure if it works on Mac. It, it probably does. Yeah. There's also programming on Apple. Now, I'm not sure if they call it Mac anymore. And what's cool about that, last I knew, is Apple gave their developer tools away for free. 
uh, the stuff on the programming tools on Linux are free. Uh, the programming tools on Microsoft are free. The starter versions. But uh, the full-blown versions are pay versions, and they cost thousands. But they make it really easy because it's all a drag-and-drop and GUI stuff. You cre create programs inside of GUI. It's well worth the money. Uh, on... Microsoft, the programming GUI is called Visual Studio, and the f the free one is called Community. Edition. Okay. Now there's also uh, Microsoft has a handful of programming languages that they use uh, Microsoft Visual Basic would be a good place to start uh, it makes it really easy I'm almost tempted to say if I was to start all over again I would just go with Visual Basic only learn Visual Basic and database and just specialize in that I wouldn't bother with any of this other stuff. Uh, there's really good jobs with Visual Basic. And it's kind of easy. You won't lose your mind trying to learn it. It doesn't take 20 years to learn how to do it. Okay, so this one, this ASP.net, that's basically Visual Basic on, on the internet for web pages. So you can see the average salary is 94000 So that's with some experience. You, know, you wouldn't start there. You know. uh, most people, you have to have some type of programming with database. You see here with Visual Studio, it would be real hard to be an expert at everything inside Visual Studio. Uh, so I don't see where they're coming from here. Mm -hmm. uh, where you live in the country you're you're going to get paid more see here's San Francisco highest paid Washington DC that's probably the military job New York City Denver huh okay Boston okay so these would be the regular programming things. Uh, I would pick one from here. You know, C++, C Sharp, Java, Apple, Visual, Basic. Uh, most schools these days, from what I've seen, will try to teach you a little bit of everything. But I don't think that's a good way to go. Uh, you spend two years, three years studying a little bit of everything. By the time you, you come out of there, you know a little bit about everything and you're not great at one topic. I would prefer to just specialize in one topic. Yeah. Like only visual basic and SQL. You know, how does Visual Basic work with a database? Or C Sharp and SQL. You know, everybody has to know database. You don't have to be an expert, but you should know how to write a C Sharp program that works with a, a database. Same with Java, C++. So, as I look at, at this now, it's like it depends on what you want to do. You know, if you just want to get a job, right? That's what's 
all about just getting a job. Uh, I would just go with Visual Basic. That's the one you could learn the fastest. Just get a job in Visual Basic. Take the Microsoft Visual Basic certification test. Uh, each certification test is like $125. It takes an hour. If it's 50 questions, and you get you, you pick one, A, B, C, or D. You know. uh, there's offices all over the country where you can take the certification test. Uh, I'll do a video on that too. Here, I'll, I'll write that down so I don't forget. Or, you know, if you're into Apple and Mac, you know, you, you might want to just go Apple. Apple is mainly a graphics thing now. Uh, but now we, we also have phones. We'll talk about that down below. Uh, if you want to learn programming so you know everything about it or be an expert in the field or something like, like that, then you may want to start with C, C++, and then learn a little bit about these two. Once you learn one language, they're all kind of the same, you know, with small differences here and there. So, so once you learn one, you can learn another one, not in a weekend. You know, you'll hear people say, oh, I learned that one in a day. Well, you can get the basics, but to really be good at the other one it's going to take months you know. like for example if you spent a couple years learning c c plus plus to compare that to something that would be like learning the first book of guitar and the second book of guitar learning the third book on the guitar would be is where you become the expert uh, then if you wanted to move over to C sharp, you may be able to be good with C sharp and you could learn the basics in a couple weeks or a couple months, depending on how much time. But to really be good at it is probably going to take a year because there's so many topics. And the same would go with this stuff here. If you were really good at C++, you could pick up Java in probably a few weeks or a few months. But to really be good with Java is going to take at least a year of study. That's maybe like two college classes, you know, first semester, second semester. Now, these days, there's a lot of programming fads. You know, here I have it listed as modern programming. Uh, when I learned this stuff, I started at a small community college, but then at a bigger college, I went and took a Java class. This was 1999, and the smaller school didn't even have a Java course yet, and they didn't know if they would ever have a Java course. That's how new it was. But uh, I, I took the uh, Java class at the uh, at Kent Kent State in Ohio, and uh, it was a graduate level course. I started out with 70, 75 people. Now by the end of the course, there was like 25, 30 left. And I don't remember the exact numbers, but it was roughly that. And of course, I'm I'm the only one sitting in the room counting, right? It was a big movie, uh, a big movie auditorium type thing, you know, where you could. See, I always sat in the back. I, I could see the whole room, you know. But I used to go into the dean's office after class and I'd always ask him questions. I used him as like a tutor. And one time he said to me, he said, don't follow the fads in programming. You know, 
At the time, everyone thought Java would just be a fad. You know, of course, now we know that's not true. You know, Java is like one of the main places to be now. But right now, there's a lot of fads. You know, they're coming out left and right. So what are the fads? It's hard to say right now. Uh, web programming is really popular now. Web pages are based on HTML. They use a lot of JavaScript. And then to work with, uh, to make a web page do more, like work, work with a database and things like that, shopping carts, you connect a web page to a Perl script or a PHP script or a Microsoft ASP script and there's a few other things too, Python and Ruby. And, and now we have and now we have phones, tablets. It's mainly an Apple thing but we also have Android phones which is Java and we have Windows phones tablets which would be C sharp and Visual Basic so one of the fads now is to write a small application that works on a phone that you sell it for 99 cents and you want to sell it to a million people then you're a millionaire so that's like hitting the lottery these days for a developer. So that's one of the fads now. Uh, I don't know if it's true, but I actually had a fella write a comment back to me on YouTube where he, he said he read an article where there's only like five apps that are actually making money now. Most of them are free. So that's kind of hard to believe. So, uh, you know, take that one with a grain of salt. I just thought I'd bring it up. So I haven't researched it. There's also things like app, uh, application programming versus uh, writing uh, operating systems where you're actually working on the code for Microsoft Windows or uh, Linux, you know, or, or Mac or Apple. You know. Application programming is more of a lightweight thing where writing code for an operating system might be a little more hardcore. You have to know more. Uh, there's also database programming. There's DBAs, database administrators. You know, that's the actual person that sets up the database and keeps it running. But then there's a database programmer, and he's the one that actually writes code to work with the application. So sometimes the same person does both jobs, but it should be a separate job because it would be real hard to it would be real hard to keep a database safe and secure from getting hacked and be able to write the apps too. Uh, I just downloaded the new versions of Adobe. I have a couple videos on that. And I noticed that uh, the Adobe products, that's Photoshop and Illustrator and things like that, they use ActionScript. So scripts are like small programs. Uh, first place that I heard about ActionScript was Maya. My son went to school for Maya. That's like a 3D animation program they used to uh, make cartoons for movies. Like Shrek and things like that was actually created in Maya. Uh, these days I think there's a few other applications that they use but I think Maya's the big one. Last I knew they offered an educational version. Uh, 
So it's mainly a drop and drag thing. You actually create characters and background scenes with like drop and drag things. But then like you can write small pieces of code script to, to like make a character move across the screen. So, uh, there's something called a assembly language. That's like a real hardcore thing. You know, uh, you wouldn't write a whole program in assembly. It's like down at the machine level, but you might, if if you get into writing code for operating system, you may want to learn a little bit of this. Uh, these days, game programming and virtual reality programming is, is really popular. Uh, it's really hard though. You know, that community college that uh, I took a lot of courses at, I talked to the main teacher there a few years ago and he said the game programming courses fill right up, but then they drop all out once they realize how hard it is and the young kids don't want to do the work. Virtual reality stuff is big with the military training now. They actually have uh, programs you go sit in a sit in like a, a virtual reality uh, tank and learn to drive a tank on the computer screen before you actually go drive the tank and things like that. Uh, you'll see a lot of job ads. They actually make a big deal out of. Uh, they actually don't call them programmers. They call them developers you know most people that I talk to they call it a programmer but if you were applying for jobs you know you're you're a developer you're creating applications a big question is do I need math or don't I need math well of course you need math if you're just developing web pages and things like that you don't really need math you know uh, if you get into anything else you're gonna need some math uh, usually it's programming and something else. You know, just learning programming by itself is really nothing. You don't really have nothing. Uh, so, you know, you have to have programming and something else. You have to know some other business. You know. Where are you going to use that programming skill? You know. uh, lots of colleges will make you take accounting because they figure you're going to be programming accounting applications. Uh, or you might want to get into programming and the science, you know, some type of science. If you can do the math, yes, keep it up, because programming and math, those are the highest paid jobs. Uh, it would be nice if you could pick an industry like I want to program for cars or I want to program for semis or I want to work for NASA or the military or I want to do programming for retail you know, uh, county uh, programming for biology and geology is getting really popular now and we'll talk about that later down down the file uh, another real popular thing now is uh, computer security and cyber security uh, you can get into that without having math and without knowing the command line you know just click on boxes and check boxes and radio buttons but to really be good at that you have to know some coding so you understand how the hackers are getting into the code So, you know, like, what is the path? If you were going to start taking classes on this stuff, what path? You know, what course should you take first? You know? uh, usually you would learn a programming language without an IDE, Integrated Development Environment. You know, just, just start on, start on the...
command line. You know, learn the code on the command line. Of course, it's boring, but that would be the best way to start. So just start with C++. You're basically starting with C++, but it's kind of like C. You, know. you add some advanced features of C++, then you're getting into the full-blown language. And that, that would be the OOP. It's Object Orientated Programming. And then, once you get a good handle with that, then you may want to go back and see what C is all about. It's basically the same thing with some old-fashioned features that you should know about. And of course, learn some database. You don't have to be an expert at it, just how to connect your applications to a database and use it a little bit. Uh, you may want to learn some Java. Once you know C++, learning Java will be a lot easier. And then the other one that's really popular now is PHP. PHP is mainly a web programming thing. And then you can add all kinds of things down here, you know, uh, however you want to specialize. Think of these as like your main courses, and then these down here would be your electives. You know, Ruby, programming, Python, and so on. Now, there would be nothing wrong with starting with Ruby and only going Ruby if you know that's what you want to do. But if, if you were to ask me, this would be my opinion, what I would recommend. Okay, so after you learn the command line, then I would get into using an IDE, and that would be just like a GUI, you know, where you're actually using a GUI to write a program. You know, these are the three big ones. Now, of course, there's some overlap here. You know, you may want to download Visual Studio today. So you're actually using the IDE today. But lots of your learning of the code would be the command line inside Visual Studio. Now there's nothing wrong with learning some GUIs along with that too. So. Uh, another hot topic now is big data and bioinformatics. Yeah. Uh, what that is, is companies have been collecting data for years. You know, like computers have been around like 50 years or so. And they have all this information stored inside of a database. Well, now they want to analyze it so they can get more customers, create a better product. You know. uh, bioinformatics, that's like the study of, of uh, our body and things like that for science so they can make better medical procedures and things like that. Uh, they mainly use an, an, a programming thing called R, but Python is very popular there too. So that's one where some people would say R, some people say go Python. So uh, There's a database called NoSQL, and that's really popular now with the big data stuff. Whether or not it's going to stay that way, we don't know. It's, you know uh, usually in anything that you learn, they say by the time you get there, by the time you learn enough to do it, they'll be on to something else. So it's really hard to keep up with the fads. But that's your call on your, your career path. I know when I went to the community college, in my program, there wasn't any hardware requirement. There might have been one class, but that really wasn't enough to really l learn about it. So of course, if you're working with computers, you should know how a computer works, 
you should be able to open one up and know what's where and things like that so and of course you should understand networking just the basics you know if you're writing network programs you should understand what the program is doing right so there's many different things here the basic desktop computers or phone you know there's servers that's the big computers you know desktop Linux, you know, networking, that's how you plug in two computers together through like routers and hubs and things like that, switches, and how you write programs that work out on the network, you know, what's going on on the network itself, you know. uh, Microsoft has a fairly new thing. It's been around maybe 10, 15 years. It's called Active Directory. And you can actually do Active Directory programming. That's for like, uh, basically you log into your company network. You know, you, a, a company has 50 computers in their business. And when you turn on your computer in, in the morning, you're, you log into Active Directory for the company. So where do you learn this stuff? You know, I'd say my YouTube channel is the best place to learn it, or at least to start. You know. uh, uh, but of course, a college or a university is is a good place, but it's expensive, and what the colleges do is they actually try to eliminate you. You know, they call it eliminator courses. You know, it doesn't make no sense, right? They want more students, but they still have courses that you really have to work at. So, like, you know, I taught a course once at a school and I wasn't in charge of it. I had to do what the main instructor said. There was 58 labs, tests, quizzes in an eight week course. Now, how is that possible? Uh, it's nice to see a lot of examples. Of course, some of them are real small, but if you got four or five courses going in a job and a wife and a kid, I mean, it's just not humanly possible to keep up with, with all that. You know, from my point of view, she was an old spinster. She probably taught this course for years. That's all she ever did. So it was easy for her to keep up with that stuff. For an average human, it was just totally ridiculous. And I'm sure she has a lot of young guys flunk out of that course and just say, hey, I can't do programming because she had it set up to where the course would eliminate people. You know. And then with colleges too, you have a lot of bullshit courses. You know, you're studying computer programming and they make you take a sociology class or a philosophy class. Of course, those things are good too, but when you're trying to learn a business it's a waste of money you're talking two thousand bucks for a course you know five hundred bucks for the books for what that's why a lot of people go to the tech schools now some of the tech schools they'll still have bullshit courses but uh, they're more focused on what they want you to learn you know you're going there for for uh, computer programming their courses are more focused on that. Yeah. But they're usually very expensive. And it's tough to find a respected one. Okay, so that's just something that you'll have to research and decide on. Yeah. I've started a series of YouTube videos on how to go to college. So if you decide to go to college you might want to check those videos out uh, always take the certification test okay if you go to college it's 
spend all this time and money learning a programming language, make sure you take the certification test. Uh, most people, they study for it for a week. It costs 100 bucks, 125 bucks. It go, takes an hour to take the test. Yeah. You may have to take it three, four, five times before you pass it, but that's no big deal. That's the way it is. Okay, so all said and done. Uh, I would either start with C++ or Visual Basic. Okay. If I was a young person who wasn't really all that great in high school, I just want to get a computer job in programming, I would just go Visual Basic. Because that's something that you can learn really quick. It's fairly easy. But these days it's really powerful. Uh, back in the 90s it wasn't a well respected programming thing. But these days it's really popular and really powerful. Uh, Visual Basic is actually Bill Gates' baby. You know, he started out as a programmer. When he retired a few years ago that's what he said I want to go back to programming which is Visual Basic that's his thing if you want to be a hardcore programmer C++ is the way to go okay see ya bye